what goes up must eventually come down. Take that to the extreme, and you have the everyday life of a U-2 pilot. With the retirement of the space shuttle program, the U-2 Dragon Lady is America's highest flying manned machine, flying deep into the stratosphere at altitudes in excess of 70,000 feet. Throughout the half-century of the U-2 program, pilots from the Central Intelligence Agency, U.S. Air Force, and NASA have experienced some extreme physical and physiological conditions. One of these conditions is known as decompression sickness. One of the Air Force's most experienced U-2 pilots explains. When nitrogen wants to come out of solution in your blood, you always have some nitrogen in your blood, but if the pressure is low enough, then it wants to come out and it'll bubble up in your system. Uh, if it bubbles up and it's in your knees, you just feel joint pain and it's kind of a, you know, a, a little pain. But if it gets into your brain, now you have real issues because it can cause uh, significant cognitive damage, uh, temporary or permanent. The Air Force is now taking a number of steps to mitigate the risk of DCS to its pilots. With the recent completion of the modifications to the U-2 cockpit. Well, CARE... Uh, as it's actually an acronym stands for Cockpit Altitude Reduction Effort. Basically what this did for us is it took us from hanging out at the top of Mount Everest at, you know, 27, 28,000 feet cabin and your body at that altitude and it dropped you down to still significantly high, something like Mount Rainier, a 14,000 foot, but not all that much more than what you would be sitting through in a uh, commercial airline. What I noticed at the end of it is I personally felt uh, much better. I didn't feel nearly as exhausted as I used to when I would fly a longer mission like that. The U-2, despite being initially designed in the 1950s, continues to evolve and remain one of the Air Force's most advanced weapon systems. The thing about the U-2, they really somewhere along the way should have renamed it because the difference between the 1955 model and the one today is, is truly night and day. And so that's the reason why we are still viable. With their retrofitted cockpits, the U-2 should be ready for many more years of service, and the Dragon Lady pilots will be safely at the helm. Airman Drew Buchanan, reporting from Beale Air Force Base, California.